have, again, our CLORPT, our climate, organisms, relief, which is the topography, the parent material, which we just spent some time talking about, and the amount of time that um, these factors have been acting on an area. So CLORPT, the first one is climate. So the precipitation patterns, uh, temperature patterns, these greatly affects the rate of rock weathering. So um, both of them, uh, you know, if you have a, a cold but dry area, you don't have as much ice action. But if you have high levels of precipitation and temperature fluctuation, then we get a lot more ice action, just as an example. Organisms, uh, so our humus, uh, the grasses with their fibrous root systems increasing humus content. Uh, tree roots are larger, um, but uh, even our fine tree root turnover. The microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, etc., and macroorganisms all work to add to that soil and affect the soil turnover. Relief, so both the slope. The degree of slope as well as the aspect, so aspect is if it's north, south, east, west, um, this can influence a lot of our other climate factors. So erosion, removing topsoil, um, also affects moisture and sunlight. Parent material, which I just talked about, um, you know, the type of rock that's present and um, how it got there. And then parent material can affect the color, texture, structure, mineral composition of the end soil. And then finally, time. So how <coughs> long all the other factors have been at work. Um, when we think of time, it's important to shift from our human understanding of time to a geological understanding of time. So geologically young soils might be several thousand years old, geologically old soils um, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands years old. And so, um, when we talk old and young, just remember we're on a geological scale. So, uh, time can be important. Uh, on the right here, we don't have a whole lot of profile development. See so at A horizon, um, some sort of E horizon, and then maybe our B or C down here. Maybe this is a B, this is our C. Uh, you know, one, two, three soil horizons. Uh, on the left, we actually have a buried soil. So recent soil, this could be um, probably, you know, alluvium, colluvium, something like that, that came down and buried our previous soil. And so uh, the importance of time as to when that happened and how much that soil has developed since ha it happened. So to review, we are CLORPT, climate, organisms, relief, parent material, time, uh, and the soil forming process that creates our layers, our soil horizons. And then those horizons are um, put together in our soil profile. So an A horizon is our topsoil. Uh, a B horizon would be our subsoil, often uh, if there's an E horizon present, it's between the A and the B, and then the B is where we have something depositing, leaching out of the E horizon, depositing in the B horizon. And then a C horizon is our parent material that hasn't been weathered into soil. Um, there's often a transition between soil horizons, uh, so it's important to denote their boundaries for identifying them. So it's a vertical cross-section of the soil divided into distinct layers or horizons. Sometimes those borders can be difficult to establish. Um, and then each one is designated by a letter. So we have our master horizons of O, A, E, B, C, and R. Again, O is our organic matter. Um, not all soils have an O horizon. <clears throat> a, uh, humified organic matter mixed with mineral material. Think of something like a topsoil. E is our zone of leaching or eluviation, so these are often lighter in color. Uh, B horizon, characterized by chemical weathering, and then um, our zone of eluviation. So all that uh, stuff that's removed from our E horizon gets deposited into a B horizon. And then we have our C horizon, which is unweathered geological material. 
And then in some cases we have an R horizon, which would be, um, you know, like solid bedrock. Uh, the A, E, B are called the solemn and are used to identify the soil forming processes and are most affected by them. Uh, again, not all horizons are always present. Some can be very simple. Some are a little more um, complex. So here we have, uh, again, a theoretical soil profile. This one has an O horizon. Then we have our topsoil. But uh, this white horizon here would be our E horizon, so our O, A, E. And that gets deposited into our B horizon. I think we can assume from the red color this is maybe a clay deposit. Then below that is our C horizon, which could be you know unweathered glacial till lying on top of a granite bedrock, or R, R horizon. Uh, some more drawings of soil profiles. So on the left would be maybe uh, you know a, a young prairie or something like that. Um, small O horizon A, B, C. And then on the right, um, you know, we see that the root infiltration through the O and the A horizons, our E horizon, our eluviated layer, our leached area, down into our B horizon, where we start to see more um, unweathered material, and then transition into our C, and then our R. So that is um, soil horizons and soil formation. Then next lecture, we will use this information to discuss soil classification.